Joining me at the CHTO booth is Cody Porterfield, the 2018 Limited Open Futurity winner. Cody rode Cat Getter and scored a 2.23. Great Ooh. effort there. Congrats to you, Thank Cody. you very much. So this is actually your second win of this actual title. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 2015? Ma yes, ma'am. So how does this one feel? How does it compare? Oh, uh, it feels great. I mean, it feels real good. They always feel good. They don't ever, yes, you know, they don't ever diminish, do they? You're right. In yes, terms of how they feel. So, what was it that you would say has changed about you as a trainer in the past three years since that win in 2015? Well, um, I, I think it definitely my uh, getting to show more, and I've got a little more under my belt since then. So. I have a little more confidence going down there. Um, when I first won it, I hadn't showed very much. So that was, I, I, we actually watched a video not too long ago and it, it was two totally different runs. And so uh, I, I think mainly that, even though it's still, it's still hard to go down there and show, but um, doing it more now, I think helped, you know, having the, having the more, uh, what would you call it? Um, more experience. And more I guess. experience, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. More experience helped. So. Yeah, yeah. And your horse, Cat Getter, how has how has it developed over this past year uh, in its three year old year? Um, you know, I, I I've always liked her. Um, Jack sent her to me. Um, Jake Murray had her as a two year old, and and I got her, and and I've always kind of liked her from the get go. Um, She's always felt smart about a cow to me, and and uh, and just maybe not the easiest to train, but always, no matter what, went back to the cow. So, so mm -hmm. I've always liked that about her. Mm -hmm. And in what way? Not easy, mentally or physically, or just um, because the young horses. Probably a, you know, she she's so smart about a cow, so she kind of always wanted to do it her way, um, in mm -hmm. a sense, and so trying to get the little control that and, and style that we want on her and keep that cow in her is probably the hardest part. Um, but no matter what I did throughout the year, she always come back and went right back to, to the cow. So mm -hmm. I, I think that was very important. Mm -hmm. So talk about the challenge of training a horse for the futurity about trying to get you know this young horse to physically get to the place where they need to 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 be able to um, confidently you know block that right. cow and to mentally get get to that place when they're still pretty young yes, and you know to have it on your timetable well I, I think it's definitely you used the word there of confidence and and I think uh, a lot of it is confidence and and having one uh, feeling good and healthy and and strong and and sound, um, I think that as long as they're confident, I, I think you can do a lot with a horse. Um, but but I think you have to have them horses confident and trained enough to where they can get through the hard situations in there because they are going to be thrown to you and and mainly just try to advance um, and, and try to have as less of penalties as you can have throughout each go round is kind of the goal and, and I think that comes with a more trained confident horse. Okay. Now you've had um, I guess a big year in many ways because you've purchased your own place. Yes ma'am. You yes, ma um, well, you started out. Was it um, um, started out leasing John Mitchell's place, and now you actually yes, own it, don't you? Yes, ma'am. So talk, talk us through that, and talk us through um, how that changes your, um, I guess, your own mind space when you're when you're a trainer, because you've got your own place. But right. is it more pressure, or is it less pressure because you're the boss now? You're calling all the shots, and is that well, how, does, how does that is. change it up? Um, there is both sides, really. Um, there's there's a lot of pressure on you know that we have to make the payments and keep it running so we have to win and do good but also the sense of being able to wake up and know that i don't have to leave and i, I can the the comfort of that is, is by far been the most 
unbelievable thing I've felt. Um, it's just for, for everybody there. I mean, we, we can do anything I want, so it, that helps. And do you have more room you can take on horses or because you've got your own place? Do oh, people yes, say, oh, wow, let's now send Cody a, a horse? How did, what kind of I impact so. has it had? I think so. You know, before when I was leasing and, and I got to lease from great people and some great places, but, but it does, you know, you only have a certain amount of space that you can and, and here we can grow to the number that I want to be at, you know, and that I'm comfortable with. So. So it does, that does help. And, and two, I think it gives our owners more of a mind frame of stability, you know, that they know I'm gonna be there and and uh, I'm not going anywhere, so. Uh, and I guess just family-wise too, because now you're, you've got a daughter, that's right. probably gonna grow, you just feel more established. Oh, so definitely. You, can, you know, plant your roots, so to speak. Definitely, definitely. And uh, take us through your kind of journey you know, where you started in the sport? Well, um, actually in 2006, I found my first cutting horse. Um, and uh, Georgia Welch was the first one that put me on a cutting horse. Um, I didn't even know what it was. Um, she, uh, we got together for the all around high school rodeos and I was very competitive in, in the other events. And I had a buddy that that roped and rode all rough stock and he cut. And I didn't even know what cutting was. Well, anyways, we got hooked up with Georgia and next thing you know, we was on the back of a cutting horse and, and uh, I pretty much moved out there to Buster Welch's with Dawson Burns, his grandson, and and uh, just loved it. And, uh, and, you know, I was in and out of there for a while and rodeoed for a while and then uh, I think 2011, I moved down here and went to work for Corey Pounds and uh, and worked there for a, a good while. And, and then uh, when I left, I went to work for Taryn Rice. And I was with Taryn until, I believe, 2013. And uh, then he he went to work for Center Ranch and encouraged me to stay there at Carl and Shawnee Smith's in Jacksboro. And that's what we did. So and here we are. Here so. we are. Now we're going to talk through your run, you're going to okay. critique it. Um, we'll, we'll grab that and, and watch that, but um, before we do that, I just wanted to um, ask you overall what, you, what your goals in the sport are. What, what's your most important goal that you've got your eye on? Well, um, you know, a bunch of my heroes and are some of the best trainers in this deal. I mean, all these guys up here on this banner, you know, I, I look at all them guys as horsemen and they're, they're the best. Um, but they're also great men and, and I, I would love to, to be looked at as how I look at them. Um, Cause all, all them guys besides horse training, if they didn't even have nothing to do with the horse, you'd love them. Um, they're great people. Um, I thought it showed the other day, we watched Highbrow CD sell and, and to watch Austin Shepard, you know, his reaction to that, I, I thought that was unbelievable because we all, we all love horses and that's why we do this. Um, I, I think that's probably the main thing is just, uh, of course, winning, but at the same time, it, it's, you know, we all love horses and, and I think if I could grow up to be like them or, and have that reputation of being a winner and also just a great person would be, be the top of my list. Well, Cody, I think you're well on your way to that. And um, watch this space, huh? You might have your own DVD here before well, long. <laughs> that, that would be, a, that would be a, a great spot to be in. Those are the best right there. Awesome, okay, well, let's have a look at your run. Okay. What are you thinking at this stage when you're entering the herd? Well, this, this first cow we cut was a brown bramer that we actually didn't talk much about. Um, we knew her and she acted good on a couple of cuts before and Boyd told me definitely cut that cow. He, he loved her and right here I thought, oh boy, I thought she's gonna be a little much, but I thought this really got the run started great and, and uh, I felt like it got my mare tapped off to where we needed to be and I, I knew when I quit this cow that she felt good and 
and uh, and after that cow, I knew that we had a good run started. Um, and here was a, a black moth that we we did talk about some, and and Matt Miller and Jamie they they liked her a lot before we went down there, and she acted good on my first cut, and she just kind of shaped up right here, and uh, and this cow was awesome too, and and uh, I had a lot of working time here. Um, I I thought whenever whenever I worked this cow, I knew we. We definitely didn't need to screw it up because um, I had a lot of work and time and felt like the mare was pretty spot on. Um, and that was a tough set of cows to, both both sets of those finals were tough. I felt like there were a lot of good horses and, and those guys just really weren't allowed to get their horses shown. Um, and I thought that we, we just cut the best three cows that night so do you do you kind of get worried when you have to spend a lot of time on a cow or do you just let the horse do you just follow the um, horse um not on a cow like that and, and like that night my horse felt great you know right here I, when i turned around to cut this cow i knew she was in a good spot and i was a little worried i i held on there for a little bit but my horse was kind of out of air and and uh i didn't want to overdo it but i knew i knew we had a pretty good run going so I didn't want to mess the opportunity to go ahead and and take advantage of it um, but but I was really happy with my mare you look like you look like you felt triumphant with your little fist pump there yeah, I, I did I, I was I didn't know if it would win but I, I thought it was a good run and and I was just happy of that mare I, I thought she really showed some good stuff that night so what are the plans for the semis? Well, um, I, I, I really hadn't changed my plans um, ever run. I, I mainly have the same plan. I, I want to try to cut the best three cows that we have and and just be smooth and and try to be as, have a cleaner run as I can. And uh, I, I think when you get to trying to force a big run, it, it doesn't really work. Um, but I, I think if you do your homework and you your horse is trained, and I, I think you then have to try to cut the three best cows, and what happens happens. Um, as anybody knows, anything can happen down here. Yeah. Um, yep. So. And and the mayor, what are you going to do long term for the rest of the? Um, uh, we we definitely career? plan on showing her the uh, the. I mean, hopefully, just keep going. So. Yep. We hadn't really planned on where we're going next, but but uh, definitely keep going.